This is the Work in Sports Podcast. Here's VP of Content and Engage Learning at WorkinSports.com, Brian Clapp. For those of you also watching on our YouTube channel, thank you for being here. We are trying to get more consistent with recording the Monday podcast, recording elements of the Wednesday podcast, and pushing them out via our YouTube channel as well. So thank you. Please subscribe there. I think it's fun for a lot of you guys to watch the videos. Our editor, Kevin Zwicker, has been doing an amazing job with some of the tease videos we've created for each episode that we're, we're launching. So check those out on social. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's really some amazing work we're putting together. I'm not just patting myself on the back. I'm patting our entire team on the back. So if you're interested in advancing your sports career and learning more about what it takes to succeed in this industry, subscribe to our YouTube channel, subscribe to the podcast, check in on workinsports.com. All the information you need is right there. Matter of fact, coming up later this week. So this is really cool. Sometimes I have PR firms reach out to me and they're saying like, hey, we have this person on our, on our docket who is writing this book and they'd like to come on your show or you know, I want to pitch you on this idea. And sometimes I push back because you know, somebody is just on a book tour or somebody is just trying to push a new product or something of that nature. I don't always think lends to what our audience needs because it becomes very salesy. But I have Desmond Dunham on later this week, and I was immediately intrigued by Desmond because Desmond is a youth sports coach. He has won like an amazing amount of national championships, and he overcame a really tough childhood. He had battled dyslexia. He had uh, some family issues that I'll let him get into because that's his story to tell. He had all kinds of things happen in his early childhood. And he found a lot of solace in running. And he became obsessed with this idea of uh, like running and competing in cross country and growing in that realm so much though that he became a coach and he's worked to change the youth of America. And I, I say that it sounds like hyperbolic, like I'm, oh, work to change the youth of America is a pretty big project. But literally this guy is changing, Desmond, is really changing what's out there for kids and their perspective. And we get into a lot of not only his journey, but also his methodologies of coaching and teaching and training and motivating and leading. It's just, it's really an amazing conversation that I was full bore into. So I please, please make sure you listen to that on Wednesday. We've got this really cool lineup of guests coming over the next couple of weeks too. So make sure you tune in. Kevin, who I was just lauding as being an amazing editor, also has worked in the sports industry for a good amount of time. So he's actually got some connections that I didn't have. And he's pitching me on some guests that I am like geeked up about. So hopefully we're just going to keep raising the bar and all of you are going to be listening and enjoying and subscribing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for being here as the overarching tone. Monday podcast means we're answering a fan question, right? And this question today comes in from Jonathan in Texas. Hey, Brian, I'm a junior in college who is just starting to apply for internships this year. I've been listening to a lot of your advice, partially because my professor talks about your podcast all the time. He's right. It's really informative. But one thing I couldn't find in your archives was any information on asking for and getting professional references. I started applying for internships and I was asked for references, which caught me off guard. I was not prepared. What should I do? And what should be my strategy to handle this in the future? Okay, Jonathan, it's a really great question. All of you out there listening, you can get your questions answered too. If you're like Jonathan in Texas and you want to learn something and you have a very specific experience you're living through, email me, bclap at workinsports.com. B-C-L-A-P-P at workinsports.com. That's my legit email address. Don't abuse it. But if you have questions, put, it at, put that in the subject line. Question for the Work in Sports podcast, and that will make sure it stands out to me and I won't miss it. So please make sure you do that, okay? Send in your questions. Now, here's the thing. We talk all the time about resumes, cover letters, personal brand, networking, gaining the right type of experience, interviewing, all these important parts, but we probably don't talk as much about references. And you will spend more time on your resume and you will spend more time on your cover letter, but references could be that thing you neglect and make all the difference in your future employment. The more and more people that I've been talking to in the sports industry, now, your resume is super important and your experience and all those things we're talking about. But the more and more people I talk to are like, listen, references are the key. Like, I want to know who you know. I want to, and that, that can help somebody stand out. Mike Nelligan, who was just on the show last week, the CMO of Vayner Sports, was like, unfortunately, resumes don't stand out anymore. 
we live in a referral world. So folks referring people to me always get my attention more than cold outreach. So references, networking, having those at referral network is really important. So start working on it now. I mean, Jonathan, you're a junior in college, right? You might not have a ton of references or, um, or, or professional referrals yet, but that's okay. It's something if you're strategic about and you think about, can, you can put the work in and get there. So let's talk about that. Um, we've all been in this position where it's hard to ask somebody. It's hard to kind of stick your neck out there and say, are you willing to go on and say something really good about me when I go looking at jobs somewhere else? Like even saying that for me right now is like kind of awkward, right? So I understand why this is something we don't always focus on. It tends to be, and I think back to my own career, I tend to think of like, okay, um, my boss at my last job, I'm just going to assume that they're going to be comfortable recommending me. So uh, I'll reach out to them at the last second if somebody asks for it. And that's really not the best strategy. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. Okay. Um, but you do need to have people ready should they need to be contacted. One thing, before we get into all the nuances of the whole, you know, how to ask, what to ask, what you need, the best deliverables, all that kind of stuff, I will say this. One of the most important things you can do as you go through this process, and I'm saying this to everybody, whether you're 18 years old, just starting to get new references, or you're in your 20s applying for a job, wherever you are in this process, okay, what I would tell you is that before you go to the market and before you start looking for jobs, before you even start considering that stuff, go back through all of your references and reach out to them and make sure you have up-to-date phone numbers, email addresses, contact information. Because what you don't want to have happen is, okay, this is when you're a little bit further on than Jonathan. Don't worry, we'll circle back, Jonathan. But let's say you're applying for a job and last second they say, hey, we'd like to see your references before we make any kind of decision or you know, we'd like to know this, that, whatever, talk to your people. And you're like, oh crap, I haven't talked to that person in 10 years or I haven't talked to that person in five years. I don't know what their email address is. I don't know what their phone number is. What I will tell you, because this has bitten me before, is when you get into job seeking mode, when you get into the idea that like, okay, I've got to start like getting out there, one of the, your first steps should be making sure you have up-to-date contact information on your references, whoever those references are that you've accumulated to date so far. I know this isn't what Jonathan asked, but I'm giving all of you listening a piece of advice here. Do that first so that you know, and you don't have to panic or have any anxiety over, uh-oh, I need to figure out where that person is now because I haven't talked to them in 10 years. That's a problem you don't want to run into in this process. It's already stressful enough. But let's, 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 let's get into this. If it was 10 years ago and I was applying to a job, the process would be like, all right, I got a list of these people that can vouch for me. I got their contact information. I've got their phone number. I'm, I'm good to go on my list. Why are reference is important. Let's start with that. Well, it gives credibility to who you are. It starts to paint the picture of somebody else's opinion of you that either you managed, you worked with, you worked for, and those can generally speak volumes. Now, the first thing you're thinking right now is like, of course, you're going to pick somebody who's going to say good things about you. So how much value does it really carry? The truth is it does. Most of us in this industry or in any industry who've hired long enough can tell when somebody is enthusiastic about you or is just going through the motion saying like, oh yeah, they did a great job. They showed up on time and they worked with us for three years and they did this and they did that. Well, it's much different when somebody's like, they were a boss. They were a baller. They did this, they blah, blah, blah. I knew I could rely on them. That's when you walk out of it thinking, okay, I got something out of this conversation. So references do matter, and references can be those people that can make you come to life. Remember, your resume is created by you. Your cover letter is created by you. It's inherently biased. In theory, not always in practice, but in theory, a reference should be, for the employer, it should be a cleaner picture of what you brought to the table while you were there. That's the value that they bring. References help verify who you actually are. They make your resume stand up, or sit down. I will talk to references sometimes and I will say something like, this person says they have experience doing SEO projects. Can you tell me a little bit about what they did? If they can't answer that, I know the resume may be BS, right? I know that maybe they've inflated things a little bit. So again, that's how this works. References are very important. Those conversations can be important. Get this. 
data shows that 58% of hiring managers surveyed have caught people in a lie on their resume. And 33% say they caught embellishments. So that means a high percentage of people are lying on their resumes. There's a trust issue there. And if they're lying and over-exaggerating, how am I going to find out what the truth is? I'm going to talk to somebody they worked with. That's why this is important. You know what? I'm going to turn the screws on the person they worked with a little bit. I'm not going to let it be crap. Probably shouldn't have said crap, but hey, it's not exactly a family show. But I'm saying I can see that and be like, okay, I need somebody that can do these five things. I'm the employer now. I'm, some, I'm the hiring manager. I need somebody that can do these five things. It's super important to me. They say they can do them on the resume. I'm going to that reference and saying, can you tell me about a time when they had to do this and that you assigned this to them or that this was something that they had to do? And if they can't really explain it, then I know that they might be lying or embellishing. And the data shows it, that people do lie and embellish on their resume. That's how we get past this. Okay, references can cut through the BS. So now let's flip it back over to you because that was the perspective of an employer. Why do, we, why do we want references? To verify what's happening, right? To verify your resume, to make it come to life, to ask a little bit more questions that go beyond the power of verbs, go beyond the action terms and really give me the, the straight on like what you accomplished in the job. So now let's flip it around. Now you're the person looking for a job. You're the person who is applying for work. Well, who do you pick for references? Where do you start? Well, if you're Jonathan... You haven't done any internships, really. This is your first foray into it. You may start with profess- a professor that you had a good relationship with. You may start with an academic advisor. You may start with somebody that you worked with when you were in a job outside of, of, like if you worked at a restaurant, if you worked at the mall, whatever, a boss there. Somebody that can just speak to your ability to show up, work hard, do a good job. Whoever those people are, let them vouch for you. And have a, I would suggest have a professor in the mix because they might be able to speak to how curious you are and how good of questions you ask and how uh, professional you act in the classroom and then have somebody that you have worked with so that you can have somebody that can also speak to how you perform professionally, okay? Now, if we go a step further and you're going into your career and you have worked for other people, again, a boss, somebody that you've worked with, somebody that you've managed, it somewhat depends on where you are in your career and what you are looking for in your next job. If you have managed people before and you're looking to expand upon that, include somebody you've managed in your references because they're, they're going to be able to speak about your style and your way of managing and your way of leading and your way of walking through projects, et cetera. Okay? If you are you know, just looking for a next step in your career, somebody who's managed you before, somebody who you've worked with, if you have anybody that has somewhat of a professional reputation in the industry that's always going to be very powerful, but don't fake it. This used to happen all the time. When I worked in the media, a lot of our anchors would tell me they can confide in quiet moments that they would say like, um, so this person who I've never really worked with, an intern or an entry-level staffer, wants me to write them a, a job referral and or be their referral, and I really can't speak to them. And think about that for a second. What somebody's doing is trying to leverage the name. They're trying to put a name of an anchor or a reporter or somebody that's well-known, put their name out there so that it stands out. But if that person really can't vouch for them, what's the point of that? That's not really a good thing. Now, if you have those connections that have a little bit of name credibility, if you have somebody out there that's really done some amazing things, great, but only use people that can actually vouch for you. Don't just use a big name. So now, how do you ask? This is where respect comes into play. You are asking somebody to do you a favor, to do you a solid, and to be your representative out there for your brand and who you are in the marketplace. Don't just email them. Don't just text them. Get face-to-face or call them. Have a real conversation and give them the information that they would need to be successful in this moment. Here's what I mean. If you are going to hit the job market and you go to somebody who used to manage you and you say, listen, I'm, I'm applying for jobs. Here's the area I'm looking to be. Here's the jobs that I'm looking to do. Here are the requirements that I know. If you know specifics, like you're applying for a very specific job and it says something in there like they want to know project management and they want to know that I've done this or that or certain specific things, tell them that 
so that they can be armed with the information to answer the questions in the right way and emphasize things the right way. I have had people, because I've been a referral for people a lot of times, I've had people say to me, like, listen, I'm stepping up. I'm trying to get into more of a leadership role. If you get a call, can you talk about my leadership capabilities? Great, that helps set the stage for me. It helps me know what's most important. So summarizing, giving them an idea of what you're doing and why you're doing it and why you want them. You know, tell them. You were a mentor to me. You have been a mentor to me. Our relationship was very important. I learned a lot from you. You motivated me. Whatever it is, give them the feeling that having them as your referral, as your personal reference, is super, super important to you. And why? Giving them the opportunity to understand why they're doing this, why you've reached out to them, and doing it face-to-face or over the phone is incredibly important. Don't forget when you're asking, get their best email and phone number and contact information. Now, let's take this one level further. I have started to see this happen more often, and I've heard a lot of employers tell me this, that when someone is applying for a job, they're including their resume and their cover letter, and there's usually the opportunity in online applicant tracking systems or in just a lot of job boards like ours or in other ways that jobs are posted to include additional materials. Anything else you want to attach here? Well, let's say you have somebody in your network who you have a really good relationship with, and they're a manager of yours or somebody that you've worked with in the past, and you have a really good relationship with them, professional relationship. You could ask, and I've done this, and it's worked, if they would be willing to write a recommendation for you and get their clearance and say, I'd like to attach it with my application, and I'd like to take a paragraph from it and maybe put it on my LinkedIn profile. Could you do it on my LinkedIn profile? Now, that's two good things happening, right? You can attach it with your, rather than saying, you know, references available upon request or waiting until they ask for them, you're being a little bit more proactive, and you're including a reference from somebody in the industry who can vouch for you, especially if you have a good relationship with somebody that has a name in the industry or a little bit more of a a professional reputation, right? So if you do that, that strengthens your initial application and that initial impression. A referral or a recommendation makes us as employers feel more comfortable that you are legit. So why not lead with that and have that in your initial application? If you have a relationship, you feel strong enough asking for that, I would do it. It is worth it. And then ask them, can you just grab a paragraph of what you wrote and just make it a recommendation on LinkedIn? Now, if they do that, again, it's on your public-facing profile. So it's like screaming to the world, these people recommend me. These people have nice things to say about me. Trust me. Recruiters look in that area. Hiring managers look in that area. I look in that area. I look at it all the time. I do. And I know a lot of other people do too. It's an unheralded part of your LinkedIn profile. It's down near the bottom. You will see recommendations and referrals. What I would recommend too is that sometimes when you give a recommendation or you say something nice about somebody else, they're more likely to return that favor as well. So remember, It's a give and take. It's not a one-way street. It's a two-way street. It's a give and take. Say something nice about them. Show them the value in that and say, you know what? I would love if I could get a recommendation from you as well. It's not a link exchange. It's not one of those cheesy things where it's like, I'll do it for you. You do it for me. It's got to be real. It's got to be authentic. And if you can get that from somebody and maybe get a written recommendation that you can include in your early application process that can cut through some of the fear. As an employer, again, we're flipping over to the employer's shoes now. As an employer, my biggest fear is that I'm going to hire somebody and they're not going to have the skills that I think they do, or they're not going to really live up to their resume, or it's all going to be puffery. And sometimes that's just paranoia because you're fearful as an employer that you're going to hire the wrong person and bring them into your team. But really, legitimately, recommendations and referrals will help you feel like, okay, I got another person saying this person's good. It's not just them telling me they're good. So put that effort into that. Really try to figure out, you know, what best to do. Now, I got one last idea for you. You will have maybe one person that will give you a written LinkedIn, written recommendation, maybe a LinkedIn paragraph, and that's awesome. 
But the majority of your references will be just contact information, right? It will be like uh, Sandy Malcolm, Gus Lalone, Mark Shukin. Those are three of mine, okay? Three people that managed me. And then maybe I'd throw in some people that I managed as well. But rather than just saying, you know, Mark S., here's his email, here's his phone number, here's his current title, and here's where we work together, which is what most people do for the information that they share, include what they can attest to, what they can speak. This is, again, in your application or in your references that you're providing. Give a couple bullet points and say, you know, Mark can attest to my strategic vision, my ability to plan, and my, you know, budgeting skills, okay? And Sandy can talk about my hard work, my leadership, my passion, my this, okay? Or we give it more technical, like she's going to uh, speak to my editing skills, or she's going to speak to my writing skills. So if you set that stage a little bit, I'm just talking about being more proactive than just listing off names. That's what we're trying to give here. We gave you the importance of why you want to have referrals, right? And why you want to have good professional references, how to go about doing them, but then also how to ramp it up a level, how to get somebody to write one for you, put it on your LinkedIn profile. But then also as you display those contacts you have, give some framework for the conversation, put a couple bullet points there that say, this is what they can really speak about when they talk about me. So you're almost setting the stage for the conversation for the hiring manager. Some of these little tactics will make a huge difference for you in this whole application process. It's that one to five percent more than anybody else is doing it's not always this huge grandiose thing it's just like a little bit more than other people are doing something that stands out because you've gone a little bit extra you're not just doing the basics you're going a little extra that's what we're looking for we're looking for a competitive edge always 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 follow up with a thank you right appreciate your referrals and your recommendations and all those people that are willing to vouch for you just having them in the process is so important. If you can do something nice for them, send an Amazon gift card, something of that nature. It's just a nice way to appreciate those people in your network because they are taking time out of their day to say good things about you. And you want to appreciate that time and commitment and the value they bring to your whole career structure. Because really, that's what this is. If they're helping you get an opportunity, that's huge, right? Okay, that should cover it, okay? Referrals, recommendations, super, super important. Get them working for you now. Thanks for listening, everybody. Desmond Dunham on Wednesday. The week after that, Assistant Athletic Director of Marketing and Fan Engagement from Auburn University, Dan Heck. We just had that conversation on Friday. It was totally amazing. You should also check out our State of Sports Hiring uh, survey results. We, I, I talked about this on a podcast a couple weeks ago. It is on the show notes of this episode and other episodes. It's on our blog at workinsports.com. We have data and research showing what's happening in the sports industry right now for people being hired. A lot of it's from the view of a job, a job seeker, and they are explaining what's going well and poorly for them. And I, you know what? If I'm, a, if I'm an employer, if I'm somebody hiring, this is the information I want to know. I want to know what's happening out there for job seekers, what they'd like to see different, because I want to attract the best talent, and this is the way to get the best talent. It's really great information in there. So stay connected on that as well. Check that out. A lot of great stuff coming up in the future weeks. Subscribe, rate, review. Subscribe. I can't tell you this enough. On Apple Podcasts, fire that thing, man. Hit the subscribe button. Spotify, Pandora, any podcast player, we are there. Subscribe. You don't want to miss a single episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. And subscribe to the YouTube channel because you're going to see this face on there a lot. Thanks for listening. We'll see you on Wednesday.